Hey Sparky, and, uh, can we can we get the headphones Sparky. out? Sparky, oh Sparky <laughs> is the name of the dog. <laughs> I'll take that. You can call me Sparky. It's a compliment. You look like a Sparky. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because I have a spark. <laughs> can we get the headphones on? <laughs> Sparky. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me now? <laughs> Good. Well, you're not talking on the mic, so. <laughs> Who are we waiting, by the way? Nobody. It's just us. Oh, my God. It's just God. us yeah. today. Welcome back, everybody, to the podcast. Mm. You have Antonio, Mr. Miami, on my right side, <laughs> and uh, Michael Cantaris on the left, and then me over here. Peter went off to Italy. He's going mm. to the Coppa Italia final. Don't you feel sorry for him? And don't even talk sorry. about vacations. You were the one that, that's been away. You went from Aruba to Miami, Formula One, Bella Vita. Hey, I want your life, Antonio. Listen, I didn't have my wife with me uh, in Miami, so that's not a Bella Vita. If my wife was with, would be with me, it would be better. <laughs> this guy's a smart you're, guy. You're right. <laughs> smart man. <laughs> Anton knows. Yeah. How was it? Besides, besides the Campionato, because we're going to talk about it, and I know that was a great week for you. This was a great weekend. The people we were, you sent us a lot of videos of what you were doing. Mm -hmm. I have to say that people loved Formula One, the Formula One content. I didn't think that we had many IFTV fans who also liked Ferrari, uh, Red Bull, uh, Mercedes, all this stuff. How did you enjoy your time? Because you look like you were having a ball. You and your little Italy top, three sunglasses at the same time. Mm -hmm. Tell me okay, about your listen, trip. Listen, first of all, you think that uh, a Formula One, uh, uh, you know, a championship, it's an easy championship. It's not. First of all, the technical aspect of the Formula One, even though you, you give me... The we don't care about this. I want to know how was your... Smirky smile. How was your trip? How did you The trip was trip? spectacular. It couldn't have been any better. I got so exhausted because I tried to enjoy every single second that I was over there. Nice. And the content uh, was very good. Did you? Were you just randomly mm, speaking to people? Yeah, yeah. This is something that just draws you into those. Uh, the people, if you're a, a fan of a, of a race, or of a Formula One race, you automatically become... Uh, best friends with anybody We're, even with the, the strangers the the, the the people that you can possibly you can never possibly imagine you just uh, by just running into them they just they'll talk to you they will uh, they'll pick your brain it seemed like you met some iftv fans as well right some cultural fans yes too? i did i did actually i got stopped by uh, fun, some of them and uh, you know i enjoy talking to them as well not not ac milan fan but nevertheless i like people that i hate ac milan but i think juventus fan and inter <laughs> fan so and what comes natural to you Right? Yeah. All, all yeah. The, making these videos. You like talking to people. Yeah, I it do. It was a good trip. Sparky's good, good at this. Yeah, Sparky. Sparky. Thank you, Sparky. Yeah, you know, by the way, guys, they're calling me Sparky now because uh, <laughs> it's the name of a dog, and I kind of like it. You know, I'm a kind of a dog anyway. So. Such a good boy, Sparky. Thanks. <laughs> Where is my cookie? <laughs> <laughs> Your cookie's not out of the couple. Let's get, in, let's get into the, the culture mm. talk because it was an eventful weekend, and, and every it's, it's unbelievable that we are two matches away from the end of the season. This season has flown by, by the way, and we still don't know who's getting relegated and who's going to win the Scudetto. I feel very blessed that we're in this season. And we'll talk about the top of the table to start because that's what everybody cares about right now at the moment. Mm. Milan, the match that you said last week, you sat here, you said the game that scares you so much is this game against Verona. So this Scudetto race is looking incredible, Anto. And of course... The only place to watch it is Paramount Plus. We got the link in the description to get the beautiful trial. Anto, has it been a lifesaver for you this season or what? Listen, <laughs> it's been a lifesaver. I was in Miami. The first thing that I did after I went there, I, I, I watched my Formula One race. I went over there and I put my Paramount Plus and CBS board. Boom, I plugged it in and I watched it. I said, hey, this is my, <laughs> this is like when you are a life support and uh, your oxygen <laughs> is running out. All you have to do is just put the plug on it. Plug there. it in? No, plug and it in. And you're breathing been, again. Oh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God. So, uh, guys, the description is on the top of the screen, right, Mike? It's, it's on top of the description. It's the link, right? It's the link. link right? in the it's top the of the link. description. Just click it on. It's one week free, I guess, right? You still so, get seven days free trial. Seven yes. days free trial. Thank God that the other guy is not here. Otherwise, it will tell you the discount if you did the, <laughs> the one-year subscription. But uh, nevertheless, it's not because they're asking me to say it. It's truly the best thing that i ever done all year just getting this subscription. They are also our premium sponsors for the entire year. Which but helps too. Nevertheless, uh, make sure you guys download Paramount Plus. They are supporting IFTV. They are pushing Sadia forward in this country. And uh, you got to get it. Now, let's return to the show. You thought Verona is a team that could hurt you. You won. You won with flying colors. Second half was all you. You won the match 3-1. to one. Huge statement. This weekend, how did you feel about that? Okay, first of all, I kind of uh, left a lot of my anxiety uh, 
on the side because uh, if I would be tuning on the game from uh, from first minutes, I would be really in big, 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 big trouble, emotional trouble. So my, the Formula One was so overwhelming, and uh, the fact that we had Ferrari starting first and, first and second it was just not. You cannot really hope for uh, for anything better. But on the back of my head, I said, I gotta find out what the hell is going on. So. Uh, when the race was over, the first thing that I want to, I checked, actually, I was able to, to find out that AC Milan uh, was 1-1 one, one when I, I caught a little break. And I said, oh my God, I this is going to be, a, I hope it's not one, another one of those nightmares. So when the, the race was over, the first thing that I went, uh, I went on the website and I went on uh, my Paramount Plus and um, the CBS Sports and I saw the 3-1, I said, wow. I said, this cannot get any better than that. What so, was your reaction? Oh, I didn't jump. Did you celebrate? I did, of course. But, like uh, what? I, I did like this. Yeah! <laughs> nice. Okay? Nice. So, and I did it to myself. Not to myself. I did it just to get all my, that tension out because I, I it needed to get out. But nice. uh, again, I said, I made a statement that if AC Milan will have won, will have beat Verona, I think it's pretty much almost done because the math is not it's a science and uh, you're not really can you don't want to fool around and want to just get your expectation too high and i tell all my friends i said guys calm down it's not over yet <laughs> because i have a lot of people calling me and texting me my friend yazan is uh is very nervous i said take it easy yazan <laughs> don't start to celebrate because it's not time to, to, to celebrate right now mike what's the and, math uh, and mm? uh, what's the math and what well, what's the math on the scudetto were you looking at it? Yeah. I think I think if uh, if, if Inter, Inter ties, would, if Inter ties, if Inter ties and you and win, AC, no, you, even if we tie, if Inter, no, if we no. win it, win. You're right. You need to win, and if Inter ties, it's over. The scudetto is wrapped up this weekend, mm -hmm. potentially. Well, I Inter remember making a couple statements that I said we might not need to win the last game in the past, and I said even also that the scudetto is going to be won at 83 or 84 points. So you can just double check it. Go to my chart. Go look at it, and then uh, you yeah. will see it. Yeah, it's true. If Milan win and Inter tie or lose, Milan it's or the new Scudetto winners. You yeah. think it's gonna happen this weekend, Mike, or you think it's gonna? No, I don't. I think it's gonna go down to the last match day. Uh, there's too much on the line for it to finish a, a, a round in advance. I know Anto thinks there's a good chance well, that can happen uh, this upcoming round. Well. But Which would you so. prefer? Would you Listen, prefer the drama of the last or do you want to get it over with this weekend? Let me just tell you what makes me uncomfortable. The, the Verona discomfort finally just wore out. Wore out. It's been uh, washed out from my system because mm. Verona, we lost against Verona in 1982, if I believe. Yeah, yeah. And then it was Napoli wound up winning the Campionato. And that was the last game. All we needed not to lose that game, but we wound mm. up losing and Napoli took the one Campionato. But, Atalanta and Sassuolo, they don't, they don't ma uh, make me uh, feel uh, uh, pretty much comfortable sleeping for the next couple of weeks because Sassuolo has spanked us with my friend uh, Domenico. Domenico. They give us a 4 nothing in Milano. And that was what uh, true Allegri, I think he, he, got, he got fired because of that game. He was, uh, he was put it on, uh, they was given a pink slip to him. I said, get the hell out of here. Go coach <laughs> Juventus and put uh, Juventus... Uh, <laughs> You know, on the top of the world with Cristiano Ronaldo and company over there. So I've seen that since then they won so many Champions League. But another thing, Atalanta, as I, as you all know, is not one of my favorite teams. They have pr pretty much the, my favorite coach in Italy right now. So, and uh, given the fact that they need to qualify for the, the UEFA, that scares me a little bit, but not that much because uh, I have seen Atalanta playing lately and they do not resemble widely what the Atalanta uh, I've been uh, accustomed to see the last uh, couple uh, three or four years Mike how do we get to this place how how do you how do you process uh, Milan being in this pole position <clears throat> to be honest I think it's crazy because the normal person would never expect this mm -hmm. and I said normal person because I think Anto is a genie that said in the beginning of the season before the season started that Milan is going to win the Scudetto and we all called him crazy so maybe we're the crazy ones but I think there's a lot there's a lot of factors to this. Milan has been incredible. I think the stars are really aligning for this Milan side. Inter also slipped up the two months that they were dropping a lot of points. And right now it's in their hands. It's literally two games and they, they can really do it for not winning it in over a decade. They can come out and win the Scudetto. I think this would be an incredible feat for, for the project they've been building. 
and it just shows all the hard work that they've been doing from from uh, the management to all the way onto the field to making uh, statements like with Donnarumma and all that stuff and they're so close they're right there it's for the taking at, at the same time you know when I look at when I look at obviously you know Atalanta and Sassuolo could be scary games which is your next one Inter have to play against Cagliari and what's the <laughs> final match for Inter should know this on the top of my head Sampdoria Sampdoria they're Thank both you. risking they're both risking very yes. very Cagliari have to play for their lives so I think it's going to be a difficult match mm. for Inter as mm -hmm. well <clears throat> for Inter the weird thing is that they also have to play tomorrow their Coppa Italia match mm -hmm. That's right. against Juventus Less midweek. Rest. So now they have you know a game every couple of matches. How do they deal with that? How do they play to this effect? Personally, I really want to see the league title go down to the wire. I hope that Milan win, and I hope that Inter both win this weekend. Just so on the final day of the season, we can have the drama, hopefully, of Serie B, the relegation, and the title race. I think it'll just make it more interesting. And there's still a big part of me that feels like Inter can come back and win this Scudetto. I know that we just did this whole intro where it makes it feel like Milan already won it. Personally, it's how I feel. I still think Inter's a really top team. Destiny is not in their hands. They need Milan to slip up to, to lose one of these matches or to tie both of them. This week could be very interesting because if Milan did tie, I think it does open that door for, for a dramatic ending. Nevertheless, before we, we, we talk more about the league, let's talk about the Coppa Italia tomorrow because it's a huge, huge match. A trophy is on the line for one of these sides, Juventus against Inter. Coppa Italia final, both coming into this with a lot on their backs. Inter risk not winning a trophy this season. If they would lose tomorrow and then they have this Scudetto, which is not in their hands, they risk not getting a trophy. Juventus, same thing. They can't win the Scudetto. They're out of Champions League. This is the only thing they have to play for, and I think it's a consolation for either side. Before I get you guys' opinion on it, because I want to know what, what you're thinking, Mike, tomorrow I want to say, and probably today if you're watching this, there we are doing a live watch-along party at Ribalta in New York City. It is an official Serie A event. The first time in the United States they're doing a watch party. 3 p.m., obviously the match starts. Get there early. If you are in New York or in the New York area, you have to go. These two goofs on my right across from me are going to be there. They're waiting to meet the people. They're waiting to meet fans. I was told that there's massive giveaways. I heard that they're giving away jerseys. I heard they're giving away CBS and Paramount Plus gift cards, hundreds of dollars worth of stuff, and a nice experience to unite cultural fans and Serie A fans all over. So, guys, make sure Serie A is making their footprint in the United States. They are looking to grow. This is the first step, and the rest of the week, there's a lot more planned. So stay tuned. Go to read about that. I want to see pictures with both of these oh, guys. Yeah. Michael, how do you see this match going, and who do you think has more to lose from this game? Uh, I think more to lose, it's definitely Inter, 100%. Uh, Juve coming to the Coppa Italia final, I thought it was a big boost for them, especially because this season, not too much was expected with, you know, the whole Ronaldo charade and with Allegri trying to find stability in the squad. And Inter, who have to prove that they're the champions of Italy with a new coach, he's got to prove that he's good enough to win again. And... I think there's much more pressure on Inter than it is uh, to Juventus. We know Inter won the last match that they played in a, for head to head, and uh, this is gonna be this is gonna be interesting one because it's a one and done game. You you could say it's Allegri style. Like I think he prefers matches like this because he can usually get the job done. The but, last final against Inter, he lost the Supercoppa in January. That's true, but I'm saying he's better in one-off games just because the style, the style that he does play that scrappy football. But I think this can honestly go either way. I can see both teams winning this. I think it's going to be a blast. And for the people that are going to come, Anto, you excited to meet them or what? Absolutely. Listen, for me, soccer is uh, soccer is, is my life. Uh, it's what keeps me, uh, you know, going. Young. Believe it or not, keeps me young and, uh, you know, it keeps my attention span uh, <laughs> A little bit longer than usual. Much, right? <laughs> much, much longer. Number one, number two is uh, it's what uh, I think unites a lot of a lot of all of us from all over the world, and uh, the fact that we we think in the same way, we like in the same game, and we are uh, we trying to play uh, we trying to play chess with uh, the best of the world. Mm. It's it's the, the things that you were uh, you wanted to just dream about it since uh, you were very young. But 
my take is again going back to what Marco was asking you before. I think it's extremely disappointing for uh, either one of the teams, especially for uh, for Juventus, because Inter at the end of the day they're still fighting for the campionato. But uh, for uh, for Allegri, having uh, I mean for yeah for Allegri having uh, got this uh, you know Vlaovic and uh, you know he, he didn't adjust the team fast enough. I mean thank God for Vlaovic, thank God I mean quote unquote because right now he seems to be in a slump the kid. So you know never I, I'm I'm saying as very disappointed for both of them but in one day like tomorrow things they can change for the best for either one of you guys i mean uh, not for you i know that you're a classic fan for inter but <laughs> you you can have a good time uh, tomorrow because if you win that game tomorrow i hope they're going to be slaughtering each other on the field because that way <laughs> oh, i would boy. like inter to come back uh, you know with the four or five people uh, not injured but uh, in, uh, in bad More shape tired. and tired yeah. so so we can give uh, uh, Cagliari a chance to uh, to maybe to to come up uh, with a point during uh, during uh, uh, the next game. So uh, for us, for us, the longer the game goes on, the better it is. And, Forget uh, the penalties, right? To, for yeah, you penalty also. will be fine. <laughs> penalty will be fine. So uh, and then if Inter wins, uh, tip my hat. Uh, you know, although I'd rather Juventus to win, well, not because I like Juventus or Allegri, but I want Juventus to uh, to have a you know a new uh, a new chance at life. Okay, <laughs> what a good guy. Because they look like uh, dead ducks right now. The interesting thing about Allegri's press conference, I was listening to it before, is he said, for so many years, this was the cherry on top of our season. Now it's the cake. Mm -hmm. We have nothing. Right. We have nothing else. This is our opportunity to win a trophy. Chiellini is going to start. It's going to be his last match for Juventus with all likelihood. Mm -hmm. In a final, I mean, there's not many players that I would rather have in my defense than Chiellini in a final one-off match. So I think there is a lot riding on this. What's interesting is that the last three matches that they've played, they've all been different. When Juventus have played Inter this year, they've been interesting matches. They had the 1-1, the they had the 2-1, then Inter 1-1-0. But even in that last match, Juventus played, they, they pressured Inter. They put Inter in so much difficulty. Inter won kind of like a Allegri style. They had one opportunity, they scored, they closed the game out, and they did a great job, and that turned their season to still believe in the Scudetto and ended Juventus. I think for Juventus, this is their last opportunity for the fans to have some sort of bragging rights for the season. Mm. Yes, I know everybody's making it out like getting Champions League is such a, such a success, but for a team like Juventus, for a team that invests the way Juventus does, I know where the team looked back in November, December, January, but you can't just call making Champions League a success for a club like Juve. It's good, but that's got to be the bare minimum. And I think bringing home this trophy helps settle that for the fans at home. While Inter still do have this Scudetto, but I think for them, the season's kind of changed, right? Think about where they were. I know in July when they lost Lukaku, Hakimi, and Conte, everything felt like it was in the dust, but then they started doing amazing. We thought they were going to run away with the league. Now they're in this position where they could win zero trophies. So I actually think there's more pressure on Inter and Inzaghi at the moment. I know for it's both. It's for sure both, and it's one of those that it's extremely even. Depends the way that you look at it. I think for for Inzaghi, he's already said that I'm so happy just to be able to get to this point, and then hopefully still fight in the league. So it's an interesting one. You brought up Vlahovic. I think that's an important topic because um, I don't want to go too deep on the Copitalia. We'll watch the match. Make sure you tune in on Paramount Plus. We actually have studio coverage at 2 p.m. We have somebody that's going to be live in Rome, uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun. And um, the Vlahovic that you that you mentioned. What's going to be in Rome, Aaron? No, Anna. Anna. I don't oh, think you know I Anna. Think she was in Venice the last time. Mm. Yeah, you maybe maybe you recognize her. You mm. get everybody confused though. Mm -hmm. you, you, I know, I know, but I know I remember Aaron very well because it's a nice kid. You remember Christine? Christine, of course. There we go. So Poppy. Poppy Miller, I see it because it's the my die lady over there. My uh, die on, lady. Uh, on, uh, <laughs> with uh, Matteo and uh, you guys, uh, you and Grella. So uh, anyway, so. Uh, Vlahovic. He's, he looks so upset in Juve's last match, especially when he got subbed off and, and he looked like he was he couldn't believe that that he hadn't scored. He's, I know he's got seven goals since he's joined Juventus, and if you took away penalty kicks, his record is not that different from Fiorentina, but he's getting like no opportunities, no service. No service. He's struggling. Who does this fall down to? This is my question to you guys. Is it Allegri's style, the way that they play, is it that he doesn't have the midfielders around him? He doesn't have any a good cast of support? Is it Vlahovic himself? Because Allegri has said he's trying to overdo it and trying to do too much. Where do you guys, Or is it just simply that he's moving to a big team and he's going to take time to adapt? 
Mm, yeah, you want to go first, Mike? I'll tell you. I, mean, I, I have my takes on this. Uh, you, you said the Mike. Do you want to go first? I'll but I'll you, go first. I'll go first. That, that's yeah, you yeah, know. That's, that's to put it simply. I'm gonna do it first. Mike. Dogs first. So anyway, listen. Dogs. Sparky first. Okay, Sparky first. Um, I'll tell you what. Uh, I think it's a combination of all of the above. If I would have really check all the the, the the stuff, I said the, the, the answer would be all of the above. But, 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 but I see it because I see the body language. Vlaovic, it was the light into the box when he played for Fiorentina. Everybody looked for him. Right now, he's going to have to share his services. Even though Chiesa is not there, imagine if Chiesa would be there. He would have even a lot more time trying to, to deal and share the number of balls that were, that were supposed to be fed to him. But right now, Vlaovic is with Morata, the ball right behind them. It's not, it's not a, the spark that Juventus had. Talking about Sparky. Sparky, it's not the Sparky. I mean, he did it the first two, three games, and here and there, and the Marcos, oh wow, look, blah, 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 bang, bang, bang. it was like the, the well, best thing, good. you know, the best thing after sliced, sliced bread. bread. <laughs> but now things are changing, so we're gonna see if the emotional aspect of the of this kid here can just bring him to the next level. Because if you're not capable to adjust yourself emotionally, you're gonna become another Piontek, and then you're gonna just uh, lose it. Because many times those big players, they need to put the numbers on the board. And if they don't, they're starting to second guess themselves. Mm. And that's what you don't mm. want to see. But Allegri, it's another one that has got culpability in uh, the fact that, uh, you know, uh, uh, Vlaovic is not getting all the services that he should be given. Because Allegri is someone that just... Uh, just puts the ball, put the puts the team on the field, and then uh, he doesn't want to lose. His main thing is playing defense to mm -hmm. win, not to defense to defend. But at the same time, it's not look. Italiano is somebody that takes the game to you. I'm gonna attack you, and that's it. Instead of Allegri, is someone that said, okay, let's start the game. Let's see the way things are going. We're gonna wait for them on the back, and then with the with the speed that we have on the wings, we're gonna to try to do some damage. They have quadrato on one side. They have the other kid on the other side. But at the end of the day, I think it's Allegri. It's it's the factoring that uh, Vlaovic is not scoring for me as much as should have scored. Is the the way Juventus is playing is placed on the field and the kind of style that Allegri plays. Anything different than that, Mike? Uh, no, I just feel like I was going to say, I think Vlaovic is a little bit frustrated with how things are going, uh, especially because I feel like he doesn't have the freedom that he did at Fiorentina. I feel like he plays a little bit more of a deeper role too, and he doesn't get anywhere near the service that he did when he was playing over there in Florence. And uh, even, I blame Allegri a lot too also because they did take him out for Juventus' last game where they lost. They took him out early. Last two games. Last two games. And Venezia when and we were 2-1. Yeah, which was Kalini. so strange. And Vlaovic, you could see on his face, he was so annoyed. Uh, he seemed very depressed of how things are going. But I think he has to figure out that um, his role is going to be not as free-flowing as maybe he thought or maybe wanted to. He might have more responsibilities of tracking back a little bit and not always in the opponent's box. So that can get a lot of getting used to for someone like him, especially someone young in Hungary that's coming off an incredible season uh, at Fiorentina. So it's going to be interesting to see how it is. Lots of changes future. needed, in my opinion. I definitely think it's a likely uh, his style. He just doesn't... I mean, I understand that you're going to say the midfield is not great and the attackers behind him. It's... There's some merit to that, but guess what? You still need a style that, that needs oh, to yeah. fit. Because even Fiorentina's team, as much as I love Fiorentina and I think they're doing unbelievable, when you look at quality, player-wise, it's not like they have phenomenos. It's not like they went out and bought players that are worth 60, 70, 80 million. No, it's that the system around them helped service them. So it has to stem from that. To piggyback on that, let's talk about Fiorentina and Roma, a game that Fiorentina dominated, 2-0. Yeah, I don't think Roma stepped on the pitch, especially in the second half. I think that they've probably felt the hangover from the match against Leicester City. Fiorentina also was coming off of four losses in all competitions. They needed a bounce back, and I thought they played phenomenally. My question to you guys is this is Italiano. How legit do you think this guy is going to be? How, how impressive is what he's doing now with this Fiorentina side, or is this the bare minimum? Should he have already been there based off how the squad is in eighth place? Mike? I mean, no, I definitely think Italiano's a great coach. Sometimes I feel like... People people don't realize how difficult he has it, especially the best striker in Serie A leaving. And for the most part, he's getting he's he's getting by. And right now, with this huge win against Roma, they're tied on points with Roma and are fighting for a European spot. No one thought this was possible without Vlaovic. 
and uh, Pionte, Cabral, Nico Gonzalez, they're all, they're ha they're all having their fair share. And Italiano showing that not even a, a full season that Joe Barone and Comiso made a, a great job in picking him. He's a real mastermind. And if he keeps this up, and Fiorentina can give, give him some more pieces, we can see some more exciting football. I disagree with one thing that you said there. Cabral and Piontek. Cabral has not scored a goal in a month. Mm. Piontek has not scored a goal in two months. Mm -hmm. Question to you guys. Who do you think is the top goal scorer on Fiorentina? Uh, well, I know. I'm not going to say it. Who do you think it is? I think it's Nico Gonzalez. Who do you I think know it is. What it is though. It's... Um, Torreira. 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 Yeah. Torreira. Five goals. Damn. I think Nico, then Nico scored now, uh, so they'll level mm. it out. That is not, that is, he is doing something crazy with this team. In my yeah. opinion, he literally doesn't have a striker. He doesn't have a number nine. I know you could say that, okay, Cabral does movements off the ball, Piontek does hold up play, mm -hmm. but you need a striker to score goals. But let me tell you he something lost, about that. What other, what other coach and what other team in the world can lose one of the best players and still get performances and still be competitive. That is very hard. How about the whole shock that we said when Ronaldo left Juventus and then Juventus lost to Empoli and they tied Udinese in those first games and they said, oh, we lost our best player. Look at the dip that we had. You, I know you saw maybe a little bit of a dip at Fiorentina, but for the most part, they're still there and they're still competitive. I think Fiorentina hasn't dipped since... Uh, since uh, they, did, wrong. They, did, they did dip. Okay, let me just tell you something about, uh, about Italiano. Italiano is a coach that has a system. Fiorentina has a system. Okay, it's a, it's a system that will work slightly less but it will always work so the the midfield that Fiorentina has it's second to none okay in terms of talent you think so I know so really listen without Bonaventura they did pretty well they have under a bat they have a lot Duncan, of Duncan Torreira Duncan Torreira they have and a, got those hurt. this is reasons why they do not need a pure striker and this is reasons why the strikers that they have like Cabral and, and company they didn't they didn't put the big number over there because Fiorentina will attack you from every place. A lot, a lot of those players in Fiorentina, they're always involved, including Milenkovic. Milenkovic on a corner kick is in the box. The guy is, is a defender. Their so, last two matches before this, they didn't score a goal, though. I know, but uh, Marco, let me tell you, you something. You need a number nine to sometimes pull you out. Now, That's true. I, my, it, it's a credit. I'm giving credit to, to Italiano to be able to deal with this, and I think he's done dealt with it without complaining by making the best of the situation, and based off the foundation that he's tried to lay there. That was my only point about it. But I think going into next season and, and if they can get into Europe winning, they, they still have the dream of getting to Europe, which would be unbelievable because this is a Fiorentina side that was finished. They finished 13th place last year. At one point, I saw round 20 maybe or round 14. They were 17th place. There was fears over, can they be fighting for relegation last year? And they've been able to step up and do a great job on a budget and without spending a lot of money and being resourceful. So I think going into next season, if they can reinforce smart, now they, they have the funds of Vlahovic, I think they could build a really great pillar, keep Italiano and keep building up. I think I will give a big shout out to uh, Joe Baron and, uh, and uh, um, Rocco because, uh, you know, the style of management has shown that, uh, uh, you know, regardless of the parts who arrives, uh, they, they, have, uh, they have already a plan and they executed a plan. You don't just bring players right into the group just if you don't have a, a, any plans that you don't just go go looking for anything that uh, any scrap uh, left over i think they did extremely well by uh, replacing uh, um you know vlaovic with uh, you know the, the the elements that they brought in even though they didn't score marco there's still a threat over there cabral uh, draws attention uh, the, to himself and when uh, you see one or two players on him and somebody else is going to have to be open this is reasons why midfielders are scoring torreira is scoring it's so a lot of people are scoring on fiorentina so again i give the credit goes all to Italiano and to Joe and, and Rocco because they didn't panic. Actually, they, they did an excellent job in capitalizing by selling kids. And this kid here now, which is named Vlaovic, that is becoming a melter case in Juventus. And like a, for me, he will, Joe, he will need an extra defender, okay? And a pure striker, like you said before, to just get this team here to fight for the Champions League. You know who would be a sick signing for them? Scamacca yeah. would be a sick signing for them as a number nine. Oof, I know tough. it's a little bit ambitious, <clears throat> but I think one of those guys I'm even... Uh, and what about Berardi? Berardi? Those are the two players that I want to miss they don't need, though. Oh, I love Berardi. I yeah, love but we're going to talk about Milan. I'm saying Fiorentina. Mm -hmm. They don't need a winger because I think Icone and Nico Gonzalez can do the job. Mm. For Roma, I uh, just want to say for them, I, I think that you know they, they didn't play well. They, they didn't come out. 
Uh, Roma, they have a conference league final that they need to prepare for. They're the only team left. They're the only Italian team that could win a final. So they're representing us well. I think they're doing an unbelievable job this year. And I think next year, as we as we tie down and we dwindle down, you know, wherever they finish on the table doesn't make as big of a difference. I know Europa League needs to be what they try to go for. If they would win the comp, if they finished in eighth place and they won the conference league, Italy would actually get an extra spot. So it it would help us out. But I don't think that they will end up finishing in eighth place. Nevertheless, I think defensively we we constantly are seeing that they are shaky, that they need to be able to stop, sign top players if the goal next year is to try to get into the Champions League. For Lazio, by the way, I just keep seeing this in the media, it's about Sarri. Will he stay or will he go? Is he going to renew or does he want to leave? The latest reports are saying that Lotito has told him that he wants him to renew, he wants him to stay, but Sarri wants to know that they're going to be able to sign players for his team and to continue with. Mike, mm-hmm. if you were in charge, you're the boss. Are you stay are you keeping Sadi? For me, I feel like there's a lot of problems that have have arisen for Lazio in this season and I feel like the players aren't 100% with him. I feel like he had a few problems with some key players and they never ended up coming together and playing the football that we knew consistently. We're saying it's going to take a little bit of time, but here's the end of the season, and I feel like we still haven't gotten that consistent Lazio that we've all been craving and looking for. And I usually don't like um, rating coaches on their first season on, on a new job and stuff like that. But to be honest, I'd probably keep him and build with him and see mm-hmm. what they can do because I still feel like Sari has more to give at a club like Lazio. Uh, it just goes to show though, who's gonna, what's the Mercato going to look like? Are they going to sell their big players that a lot of them are being linked out or not? But uh, it's just interesting to see. But I, I would say so far, I'm not happy with how Lazio season has... Uh, has progressed. You're saying no. No, why? I tell you the reasons why. Because uh, you know, it keeps it keeps we keep going back and 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 looking at the very similar picture that he had, even though he won at Chelsea. Hazard left because of him, I think. He, he, he was what, what put him. On, no, I don't know if that's no, true. No, no. He got a big money move. <laughs> I, I think know. you pulled that out of your ass. <laughs> I don't know. Let me just tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> you know what he did? <laughs> yeah. He threw that out there to see he if we're going to say no. He's like, if they don't shoot uh, that uh, down, let then it's great. Why. Let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, this, let me tell you my reasons. This guy here has has been creating a problem between Savage and and. You know, and what's his name? And uh, the other spectacular... Luis Alberto. Alberto. But that was in the beginning of the season. So, wait, 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 okay. You were the top coach. Luis Alberto got an assist and scored no, an unbelievable right. goal You were the top, one of the top coaches, quote-unquote, the maestro, the way you guys are calling him with Ludo, you know, the three of you. But, again, when it comes down to bring the unity on the lockers room, to me, Luis Alberto and, and Savage, those are the two very leaders of, of the staff. I don't see anybody else. Who else is the leader in the Lazio if it's not uh, Savage? and uh, No, 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 Cerbi. Cerbi, no, 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 no. Those guys are... Uh, I see Milinkovic Savage is the one, to me, to me. Now, this rumor, the rumor is that this guy is almost, uh, is almost gone from Lazio. But they might want to sell him to be able to finance the Mercato. No, if, so they're selling him, it's because, if they're selling him because this guy's so fed up and it's probably going to put, uh, put an ultimatum on Lotito. Said it's either you keep this guy here or I'm out. I mean, it's either you keep me or him. So what I think I is going to happen, what I think is going to happen that Savage is going to go because he's been lured by Juventus with a lot of cash that they're going to be spending on him. Yeah. And that this guy is going to be sacked because he's going to say, listen, mm-hmm. Inzaghi did it with just, uh, just as much what we, we have given to you, actually less. And then you come on board with all of your experience and all of this, uh, you know, uh, big time, uh, uh, you know, winning, uh, you know, uh, stats. And then you're not doing it. You're not leaving it on the, on, uh, on the field. So Mike. I think they're going to sack him. He, he mentioned Zaghi. I wanted to go to the... We're going to go to the relegation zone. Just real quick. He, he brought it up in my mind. I didn't ask you yeah. before. If... Big if. If Inzaghi comes away with no trophies, second place, and doesn't win the Coppa Italia, is... Did he fail this season? In your opinion? Yeah, 100%. You can, say, you can say what you want about Inter. Yeah, they had some key pieces leave. But Inter still, on paper, had the best team in Italy. And he had the firepower. He had the deepest bench... The best starting lineup. Better than Juventus? Yes. By far. Yes. Yeah, why'd you say like it was... By far. I'm asking you that. It's oh, a pushback. Okay. People say that Juventus have the best team. No, no. no I think, I no, think Inter, play, play for player, I think Inter had a, a better squad. 
And I think a lot of inexperience of coaching a big team in his first season, a team like Inter, might cost him this might cost him this uh, season for sure in the Scudetto race and we'll see tomorrow how it goes on but I, I would definitely 100% say this would be a failure and I, I would be disappointed for the Inter fans that would say the opposite because Inter are a team that should be challenging to win every season and if they don't win something in one year it, it should be considered a failure I mean I don't you, they so. are challenging I mean they they would get to the final of Coppa Italia they went out in Champions League against the mm. team that's in the final and if they lose the Scudetto they lose it within a few points it's still a failure. It's a failure so they are no, challenging it's not, it's yeah, not a failure it's okay. not a failure but no, no silverware I think that's a failure personally to me it's not a failure because uh, you know Inzaghi you know he was given uh, he didn't have uh, much to prepare in the, the very beginning of the season nevertheless he was doing well but again this is the first big team you know, Lazio was not small, but uh, it's not as big as Inter. So this is the first big team that he, he got under the staff. I think uh, they're going to give him an extra year uh, for, uh, for uh, you know, I think he deserves it. Not that because, uh, hey, listen, Inzaghi is not on the field. Inzaghi is really uh, hands-on uh, on, the, on the job. So he is uh, his For sure he needs to stay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. No, no, 100%, winning yeah. or not winning, he needs he to stay. Yeah, so sure. Because this guy here has shown that he's got it. Inzaghi's yeah. got it. The so. team was playing at one point like unbelievable football and I think he did he did get caught out with inexperience and if he can learn and he can adapt again he still can win I mean he yeah, can win yeah. both trophies no, for sure. right, right now yeah. at this point and I'm gonna stick my neck out Marco to finish up I'm gonna stick my neck out to say that for me Inzaghi is actually even better than Pioli because Pioli Pioli I'll tell you Ooh, this as well I'll tell you why Not that's because, a tough I'll one. let me just finish right. my thought okay, <laughs> okay Pioli, Sparky. Pioli is not the only one making the decision AC Milan Pioli's got Ibrahimovic over there he's got Maldini Pioli's got a team that makes that decision. Okay. And Inzaghi does not have the depth that Pioli's got behind his back. Pioli, when he's got someone questioning, when he said, he will turn around, Maldini is going to say, let's do this. That's a terrible or, uh, point. Or yeah. Beckham. That's uh, a uh, terrible uh, Beckham. Uh, no, it's not. Bro, what is Beckham doing? He's running into Miami. <laughs> I, was, I was looking at Beckham. <laughs> I, said, I, was, I was about to say Ibrahimovic, but uh, my view went into Beckham over there. I said, well, but, I said, come on. Yeah, would, it, would, Inzaghi, listen, would, would Pioli... You know, if you if you uh, excuse me, swap if you swap teams. the roles, you put in Zaghi and Milan. I don't think that Milan wins. No, I don't. I think I think Pilo, uh, Leave <laughs> what me. What is going? Leave Pioli, me. I think uh, Pioli. Beckham. Leave me Ibrahimovic <laughs> and Maldini. Leave me Ibrahimovic and Maldini. Those are two big decision maker and motivator. They are, but they don't win without yeah. Pioli. No, no. Pioli I'm, Pioli yeah. has been the silent leader, and he has the right attitude for exactly this team. And I really don't know any other coach in the world that could have won with this squad. If Pioli wins with this Milan, it is a massive feat. Mm. It is something that we need to speak about and, and praise because the entire squad in general, this is, it's unbelievable how he's been able to unite all of these young mm. players. If it's the youngest team in Italy, if you take away, just take away Giroud, who's 37, 36, whatever mm. it is, and even Krunic, who's like 28 or 29, the rest of the guys are like 20 to 24 years old. I mean, to win Serie A with that is pretty spectacular considering the objective was to get into Champions League. For sure. And I think, uh, I just want to say a quick one. A big thing that's going for uh, Milan and Pioli in particular compared to Inter, I think is like the serenity that Milan have compared to Inter. Like Inter, like, okay, we got to win. We did it last year. We got to do this th time. Milan was like, okay, guys, we're still inexperienced. We're not supposed to win it. And Pioli, I just feel like he's more calm. Like, he's more comfortable in those situations in terms of he doesn't bring the pressure. Meanwhile, in Zaki's, I feel like he's just all Com over let the place. Let, let's get the things. comments. People, comment down below. Do you agree with Antonio? Do you think that Inzaghi I, I is better than Pioli? I don't see that the calmness of Pioli. I don't no? see that. No, I don't he see that. More he tranquil. is such a calm guy. He's a very tranquil. Know, but, uh, he is I'm so calm. calm. But uh, he's got a lot of fire. Let me tell you something. No, I didn't mean it as a disrespectful. I meant it as an advantageous Let me tell you something. Thing. To me, Pioli is <laughs> first of all... First of all, he hasn't won anything. So it's, I, it's the pressure is on him to show it that he's actually capable with a big team like AC Milan. Mm -hmm. Okay? Second of all, as I said to you, a huge, huge, huge factor on AC Milan. AC Milan had pretty much the best player except for, uh, for what's his name, Junior Messias uh, of last year. And we lost even Kajer, Kajer, whatever you want to call him. Yes. So we, we didn't really buy much. We just implemented. We just were lucky to find Kalulu to just uh, uh, be next to uh, Tomori over there on the, on the right-hand side. And Florenzi. Florenzi was a, bit, a, a nice addition, uh, even though I was never big on Florenzi, but I had, a, I had to zip my mouth and just, uh, you know, just try to, uh, 
to take it back what I said about him. But again, Pioli, to me, it's 50% of what's the coaching of AC Milan that you, you actually physically see on the field. All the rest is behind the, the scene and right next to him. Vis-a-vis Ibrahimovic, I'm going to say back at this time, Ibrahimovic, even when Giroud doesn't play, which is very rarely, but even when they are on the bench. Look at look all the AC Milan players on the bench. Those are all leaders. Mm. They are standing up and they're talking to their uh, to their uh, uh, fellow uh, uh, You're players. You're 1,000% right about that. When I was at the Napoli match okay. and pitch side, I was right at their bench. Every single player, Brahim Diaz, Salamakers, mm-hmm. Ibra, whoever was on the bench, they were screaming and urging their team on. That's a that's a united locker room. That's mm-hmm. a locker room that has no problems. That's a locker room that fights for each other and doesn't say, oh, if I'm not playing, I'm not going to root for the no. guy because he's going to take my spot. To put that together, it takes a special season and credit to Pioli and credit to the entire Milan. Let's, let's end off real quick with the relegation zone because Salernitana have pulled off. They are finally out of relegation zone. They're in 17th place. They got this tie against uh, Cagliari because Cagliari scored the 94th minute, 95th minute, a header. Because if they would have won that match, it would have been something truly spectacular. But either way, the relegation zone is as hot as ever. Mm. By them, by Salernitana as well, by them tying, they kept Venezia in the race. So Venezia is not out yet. They do have one foot in Serie B. But the relegation zone is going absolutely down to the wire. I really hope that we still have Salernitana fighting until the final day so we could watch relegation and Scudetto in the same moment. Yeah, Marco, it's going to be incredible. And you're talking about relegation. When the teams go down, there's also a few teams that have to go up also. We know Lecce, Cremones are up. And we do know our boys at Ascoli are in the playoffs playing this Friday um, against Benavento. So it's, it's very exciting. We know a lot of we've been posting about it throughout the season. So we're excited to do some stuff. We're also going to plan to do a viewing party. Uh, for Ascoli also to do something with them. I'm, I'm, I'm invited. I thought, my, you're always invited. I was oh just going to say, actually, I think yeah. that this is an official invite to everybody at IFTV. Yeah. Where I, there's going to be a cap. There's going to be a limit. We're going to put out a link and whoever signs up first because they can't fit everybody yeah. in their office. Exactly. It's in Soho in Manhattan. Maybe you'll get in if you're if you're quick enough to sign <laughs> we'll up. We'll try to, to squeeze link. you in Sparky. But we're going to do a viewing party with the North Six Group, which is the ownership, uh, part owners in Ascoli. Mm. That I have connection, by the way, with the North Six Group. So do you, you don't know that. So Very good. <laughs> right. I'm proud of you. I know you have an Oscar jersey, and we don't. Yeah, I think true. you have a better connection. Oh, so sorry to hear that. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, we have, maybe we have I'm a scarf. I'm gonna rub it in uh, the next time. I'm gonna come with my Ascoli jersey. Yeah. So anyway, chapeau to Nicola and uh, to Ma- Matt. Matt. So. So I was saying that we're inviting uh, IFTV fans to watch the game with the ownership group hmm. for Ascoli's first playoff match against Benevento. It's this Friday, and then if they would win, let's hope they do. We're going to keep doing these with their ownership because how cool would it be? I don't think this has ever been done. Can you imagine watching a team get promoted to Serie A with the ownership right there? We'll be recording it. we got a videographer that's coming. We're going to make sure to do lots of streams, lots of content on social media, but also just to be there in person. I want everyone to shake Matt's hand, shake shake the hands For of sure. all of them, understand the project, under look into their eyes as they're trying to go to Serie A. Nevertheless, Ascoli was a team that was predicted to fight for a relegation. Mm-hmm. That was what the newspapers were saying going into the season. And now they're in this playoff run. We never know what's going to happen. There are a lot of great teams in front of them. We know that. But in the playoffs, that's a beautiful thing. You never know. They are getting in hot form right now. If you've seen, we've been posting their scores lately. Everything is clicking. Everything is working. So if we could watch this and document this journey, it would be amazing. Look out for the link. Anything else? Any other business? No, I want to say something else about those two guys, uh, our friends, uh, Matt and Nicola. Those two guys, they have a lot of passion. Even though sometimes you can, their body language is not really conducive to see two crazy people, but they, <laughs> they wear they wear their passion on the sleeve. I'll tell you, it's Nicola, true. I know him for a long time. I played with him. He's a, he's a champion. Unfortunately, he's an Inter fan, but you know, I'm a, there is room for me to make him change his mind. And his son now is unfortunately a Juventus fan. Uh, but we're all last the, fans regardless. Yeah, but, oh, absolutely. So, Watching those two guys, especially Matt, since we met from the very beginning, Matt is someone that has got a lot, a lot of passion. So uh, it will be the greatest thing for me to witness this team here coming into the Serie A 
and just to look at the expression, just the expression of those two guys. So I just immortalized them and just put it somewhere. And I said, look at the face of those two guys. They finally got it. So uh, I got to I gotta make a prediction. I, I just don't want to stick my neck out, but uh, I will give them a 65% chance to to starting to look into the market to buy some Serie A players. You know what? You Ooh. might you might want to just say that they're going to go to Serie A because your prediction for Italy to win the Euros and your prediction for Milan to win the Scudetto don't look too bad after all. But yeah, joking aside, uh, it'll be fun. And I think you you only did that little thing, that little you know speech to them because you want a job next season in Serie A. <laughs> Maybe you can throw the water, you know, to the players or if something. He's lucky. No, I got the job. <laughs> I'll fight you for that one, Sparky. Sparky. I like that name. <laughs> you shouldn't. It's Sparky. a dog's Why? name. It's, not a, it's good, a dog name? It's yeah, like it's a, dog's a dog's name. name. Yeah, but a dog with a spark is a, is a dog uh, that I can do a lot of stuff. I do a lot of <laughs> tricks in the field, too. <laughs> he does a lot back. Give me your ball. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else before we get in? Uh, but, but I was just going to say, if you guys do decide to go to the Oscar League thing, we do have a big surprise. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say it yet, say it. but it's a potential surprise say that we could. Say I don't it. think we could say it yet. What we didn't it? get the confirmation. I don't want to say okay, it in yeah, yeah, case. Right, right. Uh, yeah, right. But all I'm saying is, first, a certain amount of people, we got to get the number two. How many? I think it's going to be around 50, 50, people. 50 people. So make sure to sign up. We'll post it on our social media. So first come, first serve. Can I, invi- can I invite come a, tomorrow to Dibalta, you'll Frank? probably get priority. That's true. If you come tomorrow to Dibalta, you're yeah, going to yeah. be able to come on but, Friday as well. Can I invite cool. Frank? And, uh, Frank the Tank is allowed. Frank, all right. Frank the Frank's Tank is always allowed. allowed. Over you, he's allowed. What about ladies? My wife or my daughter or things like that? Yeah, can they just replace you? No. <laughs> they can come to both of them. Want. I'll talk to Matt, don't worry. I, w- I would rather, but I'm just saying just for me. Mm. Let's just invite your wife and your daughter, and if you got to stay home, it's all right. <laughs> Give me your Oscar Lee jersey, though. Gonna- oh, I'm going to wear that. I'm so sorry to hear that, but I'm going to wear it. Actually, I'm going to show up with my Ascoli jersey. So, Guys, uh, uh, for real, uh, get ready tomorrow, Coppa Italia. As we mentioned, if you're in New York, go to Ribalta. You'll see these two guys over there. What Take time, uh, what time are you were you were suggesting for the people to show up over there? <laughs> before uh, the game. Like yeah. what? 215. Maybe 245 uh, to get some seats. Go there early. You're going to eat. Guys, you're going to n- food. Only, and only nice the food is off the chart. I mean... Uh, Rosario doesn't need us uh, to uh, to just prop up him uh, with uh, with um, publicity for his uh, restaurant, but uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, Rosario, I just uh, I'm gonna hope that I get to ch- to taste you my favorite my favorite chili Gino, you know. All the right, all right, this guy. Pizza. So uh, and then uh, let's hope that they slaughter each other those two things. <laughs> So AC Milan will probably close the campionato ahead of the time. All right, guys. As always, thank you for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed. Make sure to download and subscribe to Paramount Plus as well. As always, we'll talk to you soon. Ciao, ragazzi. Ciao, guys.